to assess divine blessing, to assess God's blessing, to, to be able to live a victorious life, you should have this positive mindset about you. Some of you don't even believe in yourself. I want to show you something simple on how to position yourself for a miracle. Always my, my topic for teachings are simple. I don't want to give you a complicated topic that you forget. How to position yourself for a miracle. This one you shouldn't forget, isn't it? Simple. Good. And how to position yourself for a miracle because anytime I've taught you over the, over the period of time that anytime God is about to do something in the life of the people, God always wants order. So when God, when Jesus multiplied the, ble- the bread and the fish, he told them that everybody should sit down. He did not just throw the bread, the bread and the fish to them that everybody catch one. No, he said that sit down, sit down. Eh? So they all sat down and he, he began to distribute the bread and the fish to them. When they finished, he told them that gather the fragments. He did not waste the, 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 the rest of the testimony. He, he said that gather the rest because God doesn't waste resources. So if God is saying that he's going to take us through a 31 days of the God of impossibilities, that means anything that seems to be impossible, God is going to bring it to become possible. That's what it means. But if God is going to do that, then he must prepare us towards that because preparation leads to manifestation. Because when you're able to prepare very well, you don't fail. I know mishaps have mishap can occur, but if you are really prepared well, certain things don't just happen to you. Okay, wonderful. So before we get into the 31 days, God said that today come and talk to the church, let them be prepared for what I'm about to do. He told the people in the book of um in the in the Bible, in the in the book of uh, he, t- he told um Joshua that Joshua. Tell the people that I'm about to do wonderful things among them. Therefore, let them prepare themselves. So everyone who takes time to prepare themselves, they're able to meet the demands of the, of the, of the things that happens to them. So the first thing we have to look at, if God is about to bless us, if God wants to let us prosper, I, I told you, God wants you to prosper. If anybody tells you that, don't worry, money is not important. When you go to heaven, God will give you money. It's not biblical. Jesus never said that in the Bible. He said that I wish above all things, tell John, I wish above all things that thou may prosper, even as your soul also was prosper. So God actually wants your prosperity. You don't have to say that you go to heaven for God to reward you. In heaven, there's reward, but on earth, you should be blessed. You should be blessed to have to be able to be a blessing to people. Because Abraham, our father of faith, Abraham the father of faith. Jesus, the originator of faith. They are different things. Abraham, the father. Jesus, the originator. One person originated it. One person is the father. So, he was what? Full of faith. Abraham. And he was so blessed and became a blessing to many. In our work with Christ, Jesus wants us to prosper. He wants us to buy properties. He wants us to buy mansions. He wants us to be able to Take go to some rural areas and build people and pay school fees and, and pay people's bills for them and be able to build mansions, build houses, and accommodate people. If we were able to buy properties for Jesus to build churches, we cannot buy churches if the church is not prosperous. How? So God wants you to don't let anybody tell you that prosperity is not important and prosperity is evil, it's never evil. So our first reader, let's go, Matthew. All right. Let's go to Matthew 25 now. And then we see, for the first thing you should, um, you should be able to have an idea for you to have position and be prepared for a miracle is that you must be ready for a miracle. If you're not ready, so the readiness that I need a miracle, the disposition that you put yourself that I am ready, it also amounts to a miracle because Jesus can be moved towards and eastward when he's up on his way to the east part and he meets somebody who has got enough faith he will stop and help the person so when you come to a work with god that's why i said that when i come to the service prepare yourself 
have this mindset that I'm here for the service. Because God, God, I, I, I just gave you a scripture in Hebrews chapter 22. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. And as I said to you that we have come upon Mount Zion, the city of heavenly Jerusalem, in the company of innumerable angels. So we have gathered with Jesus Christ and they said, the sprinkling of the blood is all over us. We cannot leave the service and go and be defeated. It's not biblical. Because we have come to the God of just, the God of favor, the God of blessing, the God of open heavens. Therefore, every sickness that you are going through now, every atrocity, every pain, every, every work of the enemy, anything you are going right, through right now, I stand on the authority of God's word and we command those things to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. So first reader, let's go. Matthew, please. 25, verse 1. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13. Mm -hmm. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who mm -hmm. took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Jesus. Now five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, <laughs> but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Mm -hmm. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Jesus. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he, said and but he answered and said, As surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Amen. Amen. Second, second chapter, please. Thank you. Um, Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Mm -hmm. then, Jesus went, then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came un out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for her cry after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeah. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy fate. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. Wow. There goes the word of the Lord. I love the Bible to be read in the church. Because at least somebody has heard the word of God. Look at the scripture. Thank you, all our readers. God bless you. He says that the, the kingdom is likened unto ten virgins. <laughs> this is what he means. Remove the virgin somewhere. Okay? And let's talk, let's talk um, face to face now. Because when I say virgin, I mean, it's going to bring a whole problem. So let's stay on the, on the level of being born again. What he means here is this. Jesus is comparing how heaven is like, how the kingdom of God is like. The only person to explain to you how heaven is like, it has to be the person who came from there. And that was Jesus Christ. You can explain this really, really well in your house compared to me coming to explain what is happening in your house. So Jesus says that the heaven, the kingdom we are all striving to enter, the church we are all moving towards to go inside, the church we are coming to every day, it is likened unto a, this kind of parable where ten virgins went out to meet the bridegroom. What it means is that, listen to me, listen to me now. It means that the gospel was preached to all of them. The virgin here means that these people were all born again. 
they were born again they sat under the same pastor they sat under the same ministry they sat under the same church and the gospel was preached to all of them at the same time what happened after the gospel was preached determined or dependent on the people who received the word so kingdom prosperity does not depend on god it depends on you because god has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness you have a pastor so the bible says that it is lacking unto 10 of them why 10 why not nine why not eight because god is trying to divide said that five of them were foolish and five of them were wise that means five of them took the word of god that came and worked on it so it says that the kingdom was lacking is lacking unto these people who were going to meet the bridegroom those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil what is the oil here personal revelation personal involvement personal responsibility did god say it we are going to do it have i promised god about something i will fulfill it have i told god i will do this thing i will fulfill it god says that my body is the temple of the holy ghost that means god lives in your body that means the habitation of the holy ghost is you that is why you cannot say that it's my own body i will do whatever i want to do with my body you can't say that because bible says that the holy ghost inhabit in you so that means you and i have a personal responsibility to present our body as a living sacrifice to god that means you cannot just go to the shop and buy anything to wear ah how do you want to preach this one let me preach the gospel because your body becomes a body where the holy ghost inhabits bible says that chikara darabo sha says that christ in you colossians 3 christ in you is the hope of glory the glory of god is that god is not visiting you god the, sometimes yeah, when you're praying just say god visit me anybody who visit leaves so i pray that god come and live with me inhabit i mean live with my house don't visit me and go because if you visit you are going but come and live with me so jesus says that but the wise took oil in their vessel with their lamps how come five people did how come the other people didn't do today the gospel is being presented to you how well you manage the word of god determines how well you become prosperous how well you become you begin you see the miracle because for you to receive a miracle you might determine these five people were determined they took extra oil they went the extra mile when people were sleeping they were awake when people were not praying they were praying when people were not fasting they were fasting five of them 31 days when people said they were tired they were going extra Bible said they took extra oil extra careful they were what really forgot to use them they were not complaining i don't believe in this thing they were they were whilst people were not evangel evangelizing they were evangelizing inviting people praying for the people calling them checking on them why it's called extra works so this five people no wonder he every christian will stand the test of time whether you pray whether you don't pray coronavirus is a test of time it's testing christians who really really were born again or they were not born again because if you are born again you can't tell me you are born again and you are you are not happy with christ you can't tell me you are born again and church is boring you are boring you can't meet the giver of life the one who gives hope the one who gives life the one who gives miracle and you tell me you are bored that means you are not genuinely born again because born again it's a personal revelation she says i feel the holy ghost that he's going to do amazing things in our lives but you see the five what, Jesus, why the bridegroom was delayed if your testimony delays are you going to go back and tell god that oh you god you said this to me and it didn't happen therefore i stopped serving you no the bridegroom delayed 
So before God gives you a miracle, he checks your heart. So um, Hannah said, with God, actions are weighed. He said, with God, actions are weighed. God weighs your action. He weighs your intention. He weighs your emotion. He weighs your, your plans. Because he, he said, the, the devil said that, was the bridegroom delayed? What happens after the prophetic word of Allah has delayed? You're going to stop coming to church? What happens if, if you get broken hearts? Do you say it is the, it's the fault of God? I will preach a message one day and I went out to the message, don't blame God. If you don't believe in God, just look at me as an example. Some of you have come to Christ and you have now identified with the proper Christ, the one who died for you. Ten of them, the whole church member received the word. What do you do with the word of God after you receive it? Prophetic word is nice. God is about to do this. I see that. You're about to move to that one. What happens if your prophetic word delays? Do you blame God? Do you blame your pastor and say that the church is not being powerful? Do you blame your, your, your shepherd or your leader in that department? How about if you have served God all along and you did not get that miracle? Are you going to disown God? How to position yourself for a miracle? You must be determined. Let nothing shakes you. Let no man, not even me, I tell you every day, if you leave a church because somebody made you leave, you are not born again for the first place. How can you leave your body? Because one of your, what you, you fell down and you got hurt. Therefore, you cut your hand off. Is that what you do? You got hurt. We bandage it. We, we, we heal you. I mean, we take you to hospital and we, 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 sort, you, we sort you out. The church is a body. You don't just plug yourself out of the body. Hmm. Was the master delayed? Whilst your marriage is being delayed, whilst your health is being delayed, whilst coronavirus is still around, whilst your job is not guaranteed, will you still keep singing the same song? Whilst you are getting miracles now, and let's say something is delayed, are you going to blame me that I'm a fake pastor? <laughs> Thank God he didn't call me. So, hmm. Verse number six. So you, so you look at the, the scripture that uh, the second reader read from Matthew chapter 15. He's talking about a woman who went to Jesus. And when he went to Jesus, the daughter was dying. The, Jesus didn't mind. I, I, I spoke to this yet last week. Jesus didn't mind the, the woman. Jesus ignored the woman. The disciples insulted her. He, they said she was a dog. He said that I don't care. I don't care. I'm whatever. The woman was so desperate. How desperate are you to get a testimony? Hey, Bible says, you should understand Jesus. So don't see Jesus as a God that is a very calm God. Oh, praising the Lord. No. God is a lion. Mm -hmm. Every light begat like. If a lion begat a, li the, 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 a lion, the lion behaves like the lion. And the woman said that, I'm not going anywhere. Hey, me, I don't care what you, what you say, but people were saying Jesus Christ was, was a fake man. People were saying that Jesus Christ it, it was, was born by, the, um, by a bastard. It was, it, was, it was a bastard. People were saying that he was a thief. People were saying that he wasn't, the, he wasn't from God. But the woman, the woman got to know all these things, but she never put those things into, into her mind when she approached Jesus. When she approached Jesus, Jesus even ignored her, but she never gave up. You want a miracle? It is one thing to shout, but it's another thing to position yourself and say, God, I'm not giving up. I don't care how long this thing takes. I will receive my miracle. I will receive my testimony. Whether coronavirus or not, my hope is in Christ. My, my trust is in God. Verse number six. Wow. At midnight, a cry was heard. Behold. Ow. May you not miss your appointed time and season. Do you know why God, see, when you read the Bible, don't rush over the Bible. Look at the words God is using here. He's using at midnight. He's using foolish and wise. 
is using when the man delayed that means these are the daily lifestyle we all live in things get delayed things, things can naturally get delayed in life some of you had an amazing plans for the year and coronavirus came but let me tell you people are still prospering coronavirus you don't know <laughs> Bessie says that i love to teach with the bible hmm? I don't want to tell you stories about what somebody has done in the 1747 or achieving this principle and what Newton's law, Ted law, everything that, but no, 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 no. I'm coming close to your house. And when I came to your house, eh, I can see at midnight. I can see that sometimes you get vulnerable. I can see sometimes you get like, oh God, when is it going to be maintained? Give me a high five if you have asked that question before. When is it going to be maintained? Hmm. At midnight means that the days that you are vulnerable, things have got delayed. You are failing. And your other neighbor who doesn't go to church is rising. You have served God all your life in virginity. Hey, don't come to God. I'm, I'm God, I'm, I'm virgin, so I have to marry first. I mean, don't get there, okay? If you are virgin, it's a plus, but we are not dealing with the virginity or no virginity here. Mm? He talked about this virgin people. This virgin, virgin people were people who were born again. The Bible said that if a man be in Christ, he's a new Christian. That means you are born again and you are virgin. Mm? At midnight, a cry was made. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out there. Then all those virgins arose. That means, yeah, there will be a time in your life where you think like you should have been the first person. But God says that no. You are number 10. There's a story in the Bible about um, this king who came to Elisha, the king of Syria, who came to Elisha. And Elisha told the king, the king, go to the, 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 the river. Go to the dirtiest river that is around here, Jordan. Go and dip yourself seven times. He did the first one. He didn't get healed. He did the second one. He didn't get healed. He did the third one, he didn't get healed. He did the fourth one, no healing. He did the fifth one, no healing. He did the sixth one, no healing. He should have given up. But the testimony was in the seventh one. Ha! Today, may you receive the seventh blessing. Ah, but he, he could have he could have said that I'm tied on number three. This man of God, you didn't see right. You're not a genuine man of God. Even the Adam, other woman called Razuzi Kazaza, she told me that tomorrow morning I'll be rich and I got rich. Pastor, you say seven days. I've done the first one. I didn't see anything. You said that I'll, be, I'll marry 2020. I didn't get married. You said 2021. So is God lying or not? Now you say 21, 22, 21. But the, the man said that somebody get a scripture for me. The king of the king of Syria and Elisha, when he told him to get deep himself in the in the I think second second Samuel, no second Kings, yeah, second Kings. It's, he did the first one, he didn't get healed. He did the second one, he didn't get healed. He did himself again, fourth time, no healing, fifth time, no healing, sixth time, no healing. I believe he almost gave up. You want a miracle? You got to be consistent. You have to see those things you tell, they tell you that tomorrow morning you'll be rich. Yeah? That one, God can do the act of act of what? Mercy. And you do, but the actual testimony that God will take uh, credit for, God wants you to be involved. Because this devil is a smart devil. Hmm. He did it fourth time. Second Kings. That's what? Five. Second Kings chapter five. Yeah. He did the first one. He didn't get hit though. Jesus. He did the first supernatural night. Nothing happened. On the 20th day, nothing happened. On the 21 day, he almost gave up because he lost his job. Ah, my father said that we are going to receive more, more, more miracle. How come I lost my job? The king didn't give up. This king came down to his level. He was a king. He can't be bathing in dirty water because according to the scripture, he had better rivers in his country. But because of the spirit of obedience, he said to himself that even though the man of God said I should do seven times, he did not insult the man of God. Oh, yeah, I've done themselves. What is no way? What is this? Every day, give, give, give. What am I receiving this one? No. 
He did the first one, nothing happened. Second one, nothing happened. The Bible says that at midnight, verse number eight, verse number seven, then those who be, the, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going down. Number nine. But hmm, the wise answer saying, No, lest there should be not enough for us. Go out there to those who sell and buy for yourself. When it comes to the kingdom, it's a personal investment. When it comes to the kingdom, it's a personal revelation. He said, go and buy for yourself. So the Bible says in Hebrews that the just shall live by his faith. In Habakkuk chapter 2. The just shall, shall live by his own faith. The believer, the miracle worker would live by his own faith. What's your own faith? By, by the word you have heard me preach you will live by this word it says that go and buy so the kingdom you are in is not free <laughs> it's not free it's not free because somebody's son died a shameful death when you watch jesus those movie that they covered all his body and covered this part of his body on the day he was crucified he was naked Bible says that he became naked so you and I will be rich. He became poor so you and I will be rich. He became divorced that you and I will stay in marriage. That's why everybody left him on the cross. He was disdained. He was insulted. When people insult you, don't worry because they insulted your Jesus. He said to them, go and buy for yourself. Wow. So that means you have a personal investment when it comes to the kingdom. So Jesus said that wherever your treasure is, I will measure the treasure with your heart. You can't say, all the gentlemen, you can never say you love this woman until you give that woman a present. Woman, I'm not telling the people I'm lying. Mm -hmm. You can't. The, the, anytime you say love, there must be correspondent giving. So Bible said that, for God so loved, and then he gave his only begotten son. So he told them, look at the way the wise people are speaking. Look at this here. The wise told them, that means when it comes to the kingdom, you need to operate in wisdom. He said that they don't see this as buying uh, kerosene on the roadside. And this is not kerosene here. This is a revelation behind the parable. The problem is that the wise people took a personal investment. They bought Bibles. They bought journals. They bought computers. They bought internet. Why? To study the word. They went extra mile. When people were sleeping, they were awake. When people were uh, playing, they were working. So when the time of test came, they stood it. He told the people, we bought those things. We invested in our spiritual growth. We were there and we, we lost even great opportunity because we wanted to hear Pastor Benazar preach. We lost some appointment. We lost some um, some some some. some, some um, some family meetings. We lost somebody who wanted to take me out to go and propose to me. I lost it because I had to come and listen to God's word. I lost something. If because I've lost something, you and I are not the same pile. So when the issue came, they emerged champions. They did something where nobody was doing. What are you doing different? You are in a department and you want pastor to beg you to even serve well. So they went over, see, the job they gave they had there, they went extra to, uh, to do more research. So he told them, you two, go and invest in your kingdom. You two, stop taking God's money. Give what belongs to God to God and invest in the kingdom because we have bought it. 
<laughs> when you hear buying here is economic word that means it's talking about the economic nature of miracle god needs something to, nothing leaves heaven to come to earth if nothing leaves earth to go to heaven it doesn't work that way there must be prayer for god to bring answer there must be people gathering and ascending prayer lord help our nation lord heal my marriage lord heal my children lord heal my finance lord heal my body there must be the gathering of the prayers for god to hear and bring deliverance to the people nothing leaves heaven to come earth on unless something has left the earth to go to heaven so he told them that the kingdom you are see this <laughs> this chapter here is full of mathematics if you really understand me as well you will be i've not been preaching for the message even just in chapter 50, uh, verse one i've not finished it he told them that go and buy do you know what that means that bible says go and buy it involves financial blessing so you see the prosperity god has prepared to let us enter 2021 you cannot afford to miss this message because this is just the introduction number one decide that you need a miracle it's a mental disposition it's a mental planning it's a personal journey they said we bought it go and buy from them you don't want to invest in your marriage you don't want to invest in your everything you don't want to invest in your academic the book they're giving you you don't even read it the one they give you on the internet you don't even download it they've given you this nice laptop you're using to watch movies in the night instead of you to stand up and pray some of you here you are the first person to become a christian in your family you don't sleep the battle you leave for your children the battle you don't conquer today your children come and fight if they fail they will blame you even in, in your grave david had to fight a battle judah started judah slept with the, his own daughter-in-law that that generational thing was coming down 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 he got to david he couldn't stand he slept with Bathsheba. The things you live to not to fight for today, it will become a monument before you. Christianity is not for jokers, so it's for people who say that this is a reality. I feel my life is changing. There's something I must do. I must change my wardrobe. I must change my mindset. I must change my perception. I must change the way I was, I've been brought up. Some of them need consistent prayer. Some of them need consistent fasting. To break that, that generation thing, you have to stand and pray read read there's so many books you don't read any book your head is so empty that's why everything enters your head and when you're sleeping every spirit every spirit comes to your head and enters because your spirit is not strong to reject spiritual waves because if you put up um, a, a radio wave right now it will pick different channels if you have a strong connection they don't come around may god give you supernatural empowerment May God make you consistent. May God let you invest in your children, invest in your life, invest in your spiritual work, invest in your education, invest in your church. Don't divide your money and give one to uh, Sor Soronika International Powers Deliverance um, something and give one to Oasis. No, invest. Wherever you say you are being blessed, invest there. Jesus said, wherever you say your heart is your 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 treasure what is treasure treasure is money treasure is not a building treasure money where are you investing when god opens your spiritual account god will be disappointed that you are even crying for more blessing he said that you look at you <laughs> you stay somewhere they keep kingdom prosperity is intentional he said that look at this one he said that you as when we, we saw that things were not going to work we plan ahead sister let's take extra studies extra courses and do hmm? let's do something that nobody's doing look at the way this church is blessing us what can we do to also promote the church and support our ministry and support our pastor 
what can we do so you see the you see those minds are not normal they think extra from the normal way the people think they look at what is helping them and they want to help the thing to survive these people these are the wise people god is talking about the wise people are the people who takes the kingdom and runs with it so you said that when he came he welcomed them he told the foolish one to go he doesn't know them why even though they all had the same word at the same time when you go read matthew chapter 25 that's your assignment for today verse number one to number 13 just as our sister read for us and you will see that you are not being much for god god gives something to do and you are not doing even proper it repeats you forgot it because you are busy that god's work is left unattended no god's work is a serious adventure you don't play with when god that's what i mean i don't go to me no no huh? i am so aware about the environment that you don't take this for, for surprise no 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 uh, if i don't talk about it i know I, I don't talk about it but it's not that i've forgotten no <laughs> I'm very aware about the environment because I know if I don't do this thing, well, God will fire me and will get somebody to do better than me. Souls are on the street. You have so many social media friends. You have so many friends to talk to. Invite them to the church. Invite them to the meetings. People are dying in their rooms. Many people don't even have the pure way to be preached to them like this. Change something today. The things you know you are doing is not bringing results. Change it. When they saw that they were going to be problem, they said that you to go and buy yourself. That means it's a personal journey. Nobody will be prosper for you. You have to say that, God, let me change some things. Let me read. Some of you, you have nothing you read. I mean, for the past 11, 11 months, you have not read one book. And you say that, hmm, kingdom prosperity. Uh, you will not. Because, see, God is not just a merciful God, though. God is a just God. Hmm. Put down your book. God is not only a merciful God. God is also a just God. That means he will check you before he gives you something valuable. That's what I'm saying. I'm done saying. But I believe that you are blessed tonight. I believe that you are going to take personal responsibility. I believe that the favor of God will come upon you. If you don't know Jesus, say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I thank you for my life. Forgive me of my sins. Come and live in me. Do something new in my life and bless me indeed. Today I'm yours in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you for listening. God bless you for watching. And guess what? Everybody is blessed. Put your hands together for Jesus and give the Lord a shout.